I'll introduce myself. Um, hello, Spencer. Hello, Jacob. My name's Yassine. Um, I am a software engineer by trade. You can find me on Twitter, Yassine MTB. Most people probably at this point know me through Twitter, um, but I've made my career as a software engineer, so working on big, large distributed systems and processing a lot of transactions. So particularly my like Linux experiences, authentication systems and authenticating requests and uh, doing transactional systems, really. And then I worked, uh, so my last job before I left was uh, Stripe. And uh, before that, I worked at Auth0, and I went to uh, university for computer science. And while I was in university, I kind of fell in love with programming, and I got really good at it. Uh, but also, it was pretty lucrative as a career option, so that's a big reason why I focused on it. Um, like seven months ago, I kind of just like left Stripe because I was really excited with all the tech that was coming out. Um, I've been following AI for a really long time. At the latter end of my like, the latter quarter or half of my career at Stripe, I moved to an ML team to do LLMs and to and effectively my goal was to reduce operational costs at Stripe using LLMs. But I actually wanted to experiment a little bit more and to do things that didn't make money. So I had a lot of responsibility at Stripe. I couldn't just like goof around all the time. I I really needed the time to like learn how this stuff works and i'll yeah. like i'll be the first person to say like i can't write a diffusion model from scratch yet like i can't write the whole training loop from scratch and until i can then i'm not satisfied with my uh with how well i know it um but i've been working on different projects ever since then whatever i would think is useful i would build so i built like a little podcast generator that like extracts information from you know corpa of data and then like generates a conversation and then pipes that into tortoise tts to generate uh it's a diffusion model that generates uh uh uh, uh it goes from text to audio i wrote a little bot that you could talk to and i got the latency down and i think just oh. through my time as a software engineer i learned that latency is probably the most important thing so that's kind of where i focused on and um, I built Dingboard, which started taking off, and I have no idea how many users I have, but a lot, like like in the order <laughs> of thousands, and probably like, uh, it's, I think like daily DAU is definitely over a hundred now. Uh, so it's, I, I would say it's pretty successful, and uh, yeah, yeah, um, that's amazing. I guess I'll stop talking and like answer your questions you guys have. No, that's perfect. Thank you for the background. That's very exciting about Dingboard. I'm sure that that's validating to see something that you've built do that well. well you know i was in the shower and like i was like why is As this not good exist? ideas come <laughs> yeah know, i was in the, in the shower, shower and i was like hey like i think i think really what happened with dingboard was i was just really upset that it didn't exist because i could i was running diffusion models on my computer and i knew that was possible and i was like why doesn't why hasn't anyone built this yet so i just built it and i did it also completely you know solo dolo completely bootstrapped i'm running off a single wow. machine on, on lambda labs and the reason I have not taken any funding and I get every now and then I get people like reaching out to me for funding and to, fu to fund the project and it's because you don't really need to, right? Like I feel like it's a lot more honest to just not fund, get mm -hmm. funding because there's no reason there was, there would be no reason for, to, to ask for funding. And um, these models are, you know, all run on relatively low compute. The only thing, the only input that really matters is like human labor to like making the experience really good and listening to people. and. Mm -hmm actually doing what they ask you to do and not doing things that are not they don't want um so it would be kind of like your 30 second pitch of of what ding board is if you're explaining it to someone who has no idea yet um i kind of do this thing where i just like don't explain what it is because i think it's funny <laughs> pronounce ding board um but really what it is it's an image editor and you can use it to make memes really fast so the canonical example is uh sam altman gets fired and you want to make a meme you have an incredible meme idea but, you know, Sam Altman just got fired. So you need to spit that meme out in 30 seconds, right? <laughs> like you, the tweet just came out, 30 seconds. Can you make a meme in 30 seconds? That's what Dingboard does. And it basically makes okay. everyone as good as a Photoshop user who's been doing it for years. So it takes me about, th the reason I'm so good at memes is because it actually takes me 30 seconds. It runs in a web browser. It runs on mobile phones. Um, yeah, it's not that hard to build something like that, but it's it's a basically a P, another way to describe it is it's a PNG wrapper, like it's MS Paint on steroids. I love it. I like That's that. great. I like that. Can we see it? Can we see a yeah, absolutely yeah, sure a demo? So let me do a quick demo of Dingboard. Uh, yeah, this Dingboard. Oh, yeah, okay. Almost. Yep. Yeah, yeah. There we go. So we're gonna go to Photoshop. I'm gonna look up Photoshop. I'm gonna. What is this? Buy. Oh my God! So many buttons. <laughs> I feel like I'm getting my. I feel like I'm getting this like assaulted right now. Um, <laughs> but not only that, if I like, you know, 
if I killed a cache here, you know, empty, empty cache and re hard reload. It takes a while to load sometimes. You know, it's just Photoshop. You have to install it. It's, it's a pain in the ass. Dingboard, just go to Dingboard and it like instantly loads, uh, depending on the load, the load on my single server that I have on right now. And it's really just an image editor. So um, we see like Ilya, you know, as a meme here in uh, Anya. And you can just like take Ilya's face out here and then, you know, let's flip it over. Let's make it a little smaller and put his face right here. <laughs> and, you know, group that and then you know just like do a little bit of generation around the edges there there we go Ilya wow. selling ding board he's selling ding board right <laughs> and uh let's get this guy over here and he's 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 right there and he's like he's giving Ilya some you know move that to the back and then move this guy to the back as well move that to the back and he's right there he's like cheering him on you know that's a meme it took me literally 30 seconds to make and, you know, you might imagine, like, Ilya's, like, going, like, we fire Sam Altman. That's his idea. And it's stu it's a stupid idea. Don't do it. Um, but, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's that's literally the whole app. It's That's all it is. Um, that's but you might have noticed though. how fast it is. Yeah, I mean, like, I mean, let me show yeah. my screen again to, to give you, like. Uh, no, the like, one that getting... always blows my mind is how fast the uh, image segmenting is. Like, like I know that's yeah. not an easy problem because I, I used to work at a company where, like, our, our software had image segmentation it was horribly resource inefficient really slow and then like you know segment anything i assume that's what you're using in the background on that one yeah um, it is so like i'll go to this and demo here and just like block post and i'll paste this here to show you what happened so what this is disabled for a while and after some time you see it like reloading and a little clip comes out um that's me sending the image back to my inference server the inference server runs the embedding and then spits it back to the front end and then what ends up happening is that you can run a lot, a lot smaller model on your front end to do the segmentation. So I'm basically doing all of the work off of your computer. And then once it's on here, all of the inference is actually happening on my own computer. And you can actually okay. see it on the FPS, it like drops because it uses the same, you know, compute layer, like uses the WebGL compute layer uh, to That's uh, crazy. do the inference. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, then you, then you have like your, your, your image out and um, yeah. So that's so, why it's really fast, but like basically, like another thing I'll I'll say is like uh, this here. The fact that this is like this fast, like the fact that it'll pop off like that quick, that's like also very fast. And I actually spend like quite a lot of time really making sure that things like run really really quickly, mm -hmm. um, because as users, it's really hard to drive home how important it is um, until you actually see it in metrics and see it. Uh, user divergence. I bet you, if I just added five seconds of latency to that, people would just stop using to it, using it. Uh, so latency is like super, super important. Um, oh, I'm sure, especially but, where you're saying the idea is generate quick images, um, allow that exactly. to to just happen. Has there been um, a favorite use case you've seen, or a favorite image someone's I, generated that you know came from Dingboard? Well, you can kind of tell, right, because of the artifacting around it. Uh, so I saw a really funny one, which is uh, Sam Altman. Uh, so not Sam Altman. Ilya Sitzkever. Uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name wrong. Uh, I probably <laughs> am. But he's like, he's like uh, on a cross at the OpenAI office. And someone like, <laughs> like ding boarded his face onto, you know, Jesus. And it's like, that's the first thing you see in the, in the OpenAI office. You just walk in and, you, and it, that's an incredible meme. And I'm, I'm actually really happy that that meme exists because of Dingboard. I feel like if they ha the person had to go to Photoshop to make it and didn't take him 30 seconds to do it, it the meme wouldn't exist entirely. Um, so that's probably the favorite meme I've seen, I've seen today. But one of the things I've been surprised with is people have been using it for holiday cards. People like will make holiday cards really quickly. So you can like, oh, wow. I can take a screenshot your face, put you into Santa. It would take me like 30 seconds to see how quickly uh, I've done it. Um, and that I think is a really exciting use case. So, you know, the Christmas holidays are coming. Uh, you know, DM me on Twitter if you want to make a Christmas card and save your family. You know, you guys are fighting. You can make a nice Christmas card. Everyone's happy. You've saved your family. But without Dingboard, your family wouldn't even exist. Um, yeah, so... Uh, Dingboard spreading Christmas cheer. Just yeah, like spread, that. Dingboard spreading Christmas cheer. We're saving Christmas with Dingboard. Um, exactly. But, like, uh, I think, like, one of the things I've seen is people do it for presentations as well. They, like, mm -hmm. create graphics for presentations, like uh you you just saw it i just like grabbed that uh neural that neural network architectural diagram pasted it in that was someone using dingboard to create those slides yeah uh so 
it's really just like about the ease of access and like just go to dingboard.com. I and for what's worth like to drive home how important I think ease of access is and like utility. Like how much I didn't choose Flingboard, which is a domain I also own, because <laughs> F also collides with Facebook. So people go to Facebook <laughs> and they press F and Facebook will pop up and they'll have to press L. And I chose Dingboard because there's nothing else that you would go to other than Discord, <laughs> but people will use it as a, as a, uh, as a standalone app. So that's I why I've, I've chosen Dingboard, right? So All the I, details, I really like, yeah. yeah. So like, I really care about like latency. It's like gotta be super easy. It's like, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I want to be able to like think of something and have it in seconds. I don't want to be inconvenienced at all. So. Wow. So what do you think the long-term plan is with Dingboard? Like oh. if you could chart it out, what would you envision? I would just like scale it at this point. Like, I feel like I'm just going to keep on adding. So the really important part about Dingboard is my ability to create the system architecture that I can add new cool things to, because that is the one thing that is going to keep on coming. So I want the time for me to add a new feature. If I see a cool paper, I'm like, whoa, that's so cool. If it would take me like a day to ship in Dingboard, then that's where I want Dingboard to be. So really what it is, is the system around it that enables me to ship features really fast. Mm -hmm. That's what Dingboard is. That's why I have like, Dingboard has the fastest in painting out of anyone. And it has the best one, to be honest. Um, it's because I've set up the system so that I press a single button on my computer and the feature goes. Uh, yeah. it, I don't really have to think about it that much. Um, so that's where I want to take it. Uh, but also like, I think it's kind of over for image gen companies in general. Um, there's stuff coming out of the pipeline that I, I genuinely think that like, we're going to get to a point where AI is going to be able to do anything, uh, like particularly instruction, uh, a tool using AI that can take human instructions. So you might imagine giving ding boards to an AI that can, you know, understand your instructions like, oh, like put Ilya on a cross and put him in an open AI office. And it's being able to generate the correct assets, being, it being able to search for pictures of Ilya and like shoot him in or ding board him in. Mm -hmm. um, so I actually think as a product, Dingboard's like dead in like two years. So if you're a VC and you're like shaking your hands like this, you're like, oh, like you're rubbing your hands. Like, oh man, I should really fund this kid. I'm not that young, actually. I shouldn't call myself a kid. Um, I should, <laughs> this, this uh, not young adult, not young anymore. Um, I should fund this guy. Uh, no, don't fund me because this thing is dead. In fact, uh, a lot of companies you're funding should probably not be funded at all uh, mm -hmm. because the AIs, there are sort of the AI systems that people are going to develop are going to be able to do more and more of this stuff. So I'm just having fun. <laughs> interesting. So yeah, no, that's, that's a very interesting point with like the future of the AI industry. So you think a lot of these like, you know, future dude, tools, just two more, two more Neurips conferences and that's it. It's done. And you we're know, there. A couple of guys. Yeah. Like <laughs> yeah. people are figuring out like instructs, like instruct edit. So if you can instruct edit and be like, you know, turn Jan Lukun into George Clooney, like that's, that's ding board. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. it's dead. And at that point, I just, you know, pivot into something fun and interesting or, you know, ship the George Clooney button. <laughs> so, right, like, that's the, that's the important distinction. It's like uh, Dingboard is really the thing where you can go try out new cool things that are coming out of uh, AI and yeah. applying it in, in goofy fun ways. It's more of a video game than it is an image editor. Yeah, so actually on that note, I, 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 I've seen you talk about how you rebuilt it in a video game engine. Why did you go that direction rather than, you know? <laughs> well you saw uh, this, any other. you saw you saw when like the sniper gun or the segmentation tool uh loaded there was a clip that came yeah. out and it like dropped the, yeah it's all I for mean, that <laughs> i mean like it's like things like that it's like i want to do yeah. really goofy things like i want to yeah. I, I literally want like an anime character that you can talk to using your voice i just need the freedom to do that i can't be doing that in someone else's framework that isn't yeah. built for uh, insanity so like i have to like build things from scratch and when i do do that there's things i can do that like are really intuitive like uh being able to rotate by literally dragging the rotate button around um yeah. there's things that I, there, there are things that i can do right. with game engines that are just a lot more freeing um and the thing that i particularly needed from the game engine was the rendering engine because yeah. i don't i mean that's already solved so i just like picked a random rendering engine i like look at their code it's like oh this kind of i can i kind of understand how this thing works and then pretty much everything else I've written myself, like the ticker, the, uh, the ticker logic, the physics I've written myself and the, uh, UI, like the UI framework. I've like basically just built my own mm -hmm. UI framework. It's really That's just cool. about freedom, right? Like yeah. you want to, in such a, 
right now it's absolutely complete chaos. This technology is causing a lot of chaos because it's super unpredictable. It's moving mm -hmm. very, very fast. Right. And it's the way we use computers is going to change very quickly because of this technology. So what I really needed was absolute freedom. So I didn't, I couldn't be constrained to any API. I needed, I need to be able yeah. to like render a box at X and Y coordinates and then move it like a certain, you know what I mean? So, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That's amazing. So what has been, as you've been building Ding, do you view Dingboard like, is this going to be for you like a company where you're going to be coming out with other things or is Dingboard kind of a standalone tool? Um, in the coming year, months? Um, so it is a company, and I actually am turning it in, like I've made it a company because I'm going to need to hire people, and I'm probably going to hire like interns from my local university. I'm just going to hang out at my local university and play video <laughs> games in my Perfect. computer science, in the computer science uh, lounge. And whoever's like running the most priced out setup, I'll hire them. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, it is a company because I actually do need the help. Yeah, um, but definitely. really, I'm just gonna do whatever like users ask me to do. Like, okay. it's I'm not really like tied down to any single thing. It's really just like I'm mostly having fun. If everyone else is like happy with whatever I'm cre I'm creating, I'm mm -hmm. gonna keep on rolling with it. Like, I'm not gonna try to predict any too far into the future because fundamentally we like live in a very unpredictable time. Yeah. So yeah. make no predictions. Just like the only thing I'm really investing in is my ability to react. So there's a lot of infrastructure and systems I'm building to make me move fast. And if I just invest in that, I mean, that's going to be just generally useful. Yeah. Wow. So you mentioned not, you haven't accepted any of these people who have come to you with offers for funding. And do you feel like you'll, you'll be able to scale Dingboard to where you want to be without funding? Yeah, easily, dude. Are you kidding me? I could surf like, I can serve so much DAU off of a single H100. I could just like borrow See, my that's friends. Amazing. Like, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's we we the one of the reasons is because my coding capacity with the old version of GPT-4 has increased uh, substantially, like very very high. Like I'm actually super productive at programming now, like probably mm -hmm. five to ten times more productive wow. because I've been I've I have things that I'm very, not very good at, like quite personally, not very good at detail oriented things. And when I kind of dive down into the details, I lose focus very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, it, it takes a lot of energy for myself to do. And what GPT-4 does is it's automated the drudgery in between of coding. Yeah. So I'm still coding, right? But I'm automating the actual inputs. And yeah. that has increased my capacity to a large degree because that was the bottleneck. So it removed the bottleneck for me personally with the way my, I, I code myself. So uh, that's one big factor of the fact that I don't need to hire anyone. Um, mm -hmm. So Dingboard is free. All you have to do is ask me for an invite code. But when I give people the option to like support Dingboard with a subscription, and if I continue at this rate of growth, I'll be completely bootstrapped. So like I'll stop like uh, going off my savings, and like I'll be like, wow. you know, uh, at this point, it's like I, I call it Costco bill profitable. Um, the next step is mortgage uh, profitable, and then after mortgage profitable, it's going to be bigger lawn profitable. So. Oh man! Try to hit those three, those those two more, two more goals. Right in front of us. <laughs> That'll be the day. The bigger, yeah. bigger loan. And and then I'll, I'll say that like that's why I I'm avoiding taking funding. And mm -hmm. I think it's a uh, so I don't necessarily like I think VCs play a very important role in our economy, and a lot of things wouldn't exist if we didn't have that system to reallocate right. capital. But the incentives are fundamentally misaligned. It would be dishonest for me to take funding because my goals are not create a billion dollar company my mm -hmm. goals are get a bigger lawn that i can like convince my <laughs> wife you know if i can go to my wife and tell her hey like i swear to god these ro these robot lawn care robot th these these this lawn lawn care uh robot that you know mows my lawn for me is a reasonable purchase uh if i can get <laughs> to that point then i'm good right so um maybe after i get to there i'll i'll uh, I'll, I'll be happy to talk to vcs about stuff but i think like as it stands the incentives are just too misaligned i I, yeah, yeah. I I'm a bit too nuts, right? Like it's like, like you know, they'll they'll be like, hey, if I had a VC, they'll be like, why don't you add a paywall? I'm like, no, it's just it feels wrong, and I think yeah, that would that's... make them upset. Right. So it's like, don't fund me then. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, no, that makes so, total sense. We kind of talked about this a little bit already, but we're, what were kind of some pain points that you ran into with with Dingboard on on the way up? Have you run into any scaling issues yet, or anything like that? 
Um, so right now, the only thing that I'm not able to scale is support. So I would like to make sure that every single person feels heard. And this is why I have it closed access still, where you can only get access by having a conversation with me. Because fundamentally, if like, if you're using Dingboard, I want you to feel like I'm actually really listening to you. One of the ways I do it is like when people tell me a bug and I know it's really easy to fix, I'll like fix it immediately. And I'll like immediately message them back. It's like, hey, like, it's been five minutes, like check, is it fixed? And I'll be like, sweet, it's fixed. Because that is a relationship that is, gives me immense value, right? For me, having people actually going out and using it and giving me information that I wouldn't be able to collect otherwise um, about the ways that they're going to use it. I would have never been able to predict that people were going to use it for like presentations and stuff, mm-hmm. uh, for example. So that's the only thing that I can't scale very well right now is like Twitter. I keep on getting rate limited because I'm sending so many messages. Like, <laughs> um, And yeah, like I need to like figure out a solution for that because I think that's probably my biggest scaling issue is like support. Um, yeah, yeah. Because if it's like programming, I can do that. If it's like scaling, like compute wise, like I'll just like, I don't know, batch better or something <laughs> or like get a smaller <laughs> model. Like, yeah, right. Yeah, right. Um, I mean, how incredible I'm, though that you have, you know, thousands of users and it's really just you right now doing everything yeah yeah i don't know it's it's really i mean i work like crazy hours though so (laughs) it's like probably yeah it would probably be good if i worked a little bit less but yeah uh i could probably grow more though off of just myself i think it's totally possible right like i mean I'm, i'm i'm you know i've been a software engineer for a long time and i've learned a couple of tricks Mm-hmm. And one of those tricks is don't do things that make it harder for yourself later. And Ding Forward has no safe state because to have a safe state, I would have to have a database, which is another component, which means more maintenance. So I, I just see. like say, no, no safe states. Another thing is that it gives me is like, I can change the data structures that power Ding Board because every time you refresh Ding Board, it's a fresh state and you don't have to save your old state. And then, so I don't I have see. to deal with backwards compatibility. So I literally make decisions all the time that like, don't, blow me up right mm-hmm. um another example is like your database like what database it's sqlite just like fucking whatever is easiest like just it's like what server are you are you using versal are you using like are you using like workers like are you what are you, who's you just it's a like one server one computer yeah it's like <laughs> how do you deploy what's your deploy setup i, I run a bash script on my computer it's just whatever is the dumbest yeah. easiest thing just do that and like it's it scales like it's not I mean, and then people like are really helpful too. I think that's another thing is like the people I've been giving a ding board access to, like they like when they see a bug, they'll take really special care to explain it. And that helps me save a lot of time as well. So. Yeah. Yeah. Something so, that's been amazing about AI to me is just like the, how much velocity it can give solo devs, like, like watching you work on ding board. I was like, oh shoot, like I should start working on some sort of like energetic app. That seems like fun. So I did like, and like, it's been a blast. Like it's. Yep. It's it's crazy how many possibilities it opens up. The it's the thing I was talking about earlier before we started recording. The cost of doing things has crashed substantially. So when you would have had to hire a team and deal with the things that teams come with, like payroll, right? Like et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Um using GPT four as an augmentation for yourself or any other model. I'm sure there was, there are going to be ones in the next year that are just as capable, more capable, cheaper to run. Um, is a really big game changer. Like another reason I I am not taking any venture capitalist funding is because I don't want to talk to people. I don't have time. I don't have time. I, <laughs> yeah. I just don't have time. Like my my time. only limit is like how many hours there are in the day, because yeah. those are hours where I'm micromanaging an AI doing work for me. Yeah. Um. So like, if you want to talk to me, like, like it's like you know. Hiring people is like payroll. You have to like do one-on-ones with folks when you're managing them. Mm-hmm. You have to uh, make sure that they're doing the right work. Just no, don't do mm-hmm. that. So um, what would you say? Because I know that is a concern with AI, for example, like those who are concerned that, you know, AI is taking jobs. What would you say to them if they were to hear that and be like, see, like, you don't need to hire a team now. Okay, There's well, jobs lost. Like, what would you say to someone so, with that? Concern? Yeah, there are jobs lost. So, uh, build your own business and like provide something of value to other people around you. And there's, I mean, here, here's the way. I, the, the when I think about it, at the limit is okay. If AI gets so good that every single problem is solved, because my job is really to just generally solve problems. If we have AIs that could 
solve problems abstractly, then we can just have an AI solve the problem of people not having jobs, <laughs> right? And yeah. the cost of things are just going to crash to zero, so it's fine. It's like everything will be fine. Like don't worry about it. <laughs> another way to another, another way to describe it is Dingboard is literally fucking free because I don't have to hire a big team of people. I don't have a venture capitalist yeah. like breathing over my neck and yeah. being like, "Where's the growth? Where's the growth?" There is no growth. It's free <laughs> um, because it's so cheap for me to produce. Like I don't have yeah. to hire a team of people. So yeah. the, what's actually happening is the cost of things are going to crash. I don't have to like get an accountant. Yeah, sure. The person lost business, but also like I gained, you know, I can produce uh, something for you at a cheaper cost as a result. Right. Um, so yeah, it's all good, dude. It's like, whatever. Like, I mean, yeah. if you think about it this way, like I would rather live in my humble home here in Ottawa, Ontario than a giant castle in the 1600s because I would die from syphilis. <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> That's a good perspective, you know? <laughs> yeah, right? Like, it's like, it's going to be fine. Like, you don't, it's like, yeah, like, and then we'll be able to do jobs are, are worth doing because things yeah. are, t like, for example, like, you know, um, like schools, you know, teachers, I think t like teaching kids is, is a job that's going to stick around. I feel like that's a very important job. So yeah. more capital is going to be allocated to that thing. And that's just probably a better thing. Like, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. No, that's a, and kind of what you touched on is, thoughts i've often had it's not so much yes you know obviously certain jobs are lost but it also opens the door to so many other possibilities so yeah, many other jobs exactly changes industries but doesn't necessarily replace the industry it just alters yes. it and changes the opportunities in that industry in a good way right it's like um right. it increases when you it, amusingly when you crash the cost of something demand kind of like overcompensates for the fact that the cost of it has crashed so you end up making a lot more money and there's a mm -hmm. lot more jobs created a good example is python crashed a crash to cost or java crashed the cost of writing c plus plus because you don't need to manage pointers anymore there's a garbage collector that does work for you but then it's like oh programming is cheap now it makes sense for me to buy programmers or buy yeah. a, uh, contract out someone to build systems for me so the demand of programmers is increased in fact I bet you that as uh, GPT-4 and other code models automate coding more and more, there's going to be more and more demand for code because yeah. the the it just starts working a lot better at, working a lot better on the spreadsheet. Wow! Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's yeah, it's like super exciting. That's that's been my take as well. That um, it's just it's. I, you know, in, in, in history, anytime there's been something that a process that was previously completely manual that we automated even partially, like it's never, yeah, like you've said, like it's, it's never crashed the demand for that thing. It's only heightened the demand. And I don't want to, I don't want to sit around and do like the boring part of coding anymore. No, I no one do does. The cool stuff. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I want to see the end result. I want to see the magic. Oh, blam. Like, you know what I mean? Like, uh, one of the things I'm planning for Dingboard is like shipping a language model that's trained to write shaders. So you can describe what shader you want, like, oh, like pixelate this image and yeah. it'll just pixelate the image by literally writing a shader for it. Like, wow. that's just fun. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, yeah. that's cool. It's, it's sick, dude. I'd, I'd gladly lose my job to have an AI that can write me <laughs> shaders. Like, come on. I'll, like, I'll go, like, I don't know, like get another job. Like, I'll, I'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, you can. Yeah, you'll figure it out, man. So what, I mean, what industries do you think will be most affected in the coming months year programmers computer computer programming like generally like the more technolo te technological you are the more receptive to technology your your business is uh the more likely you're going to be affected but yeah i don't know man this stuff is so crazy what's really wild to me is like the demos that you can create with such a little effort now and i don't know there's like you know these voice ai that you can like have a conversation with so i'm are there going to be like I mean, you already see automation happening to some degree when you go to like your grocery store and your mm -hmm. you know self checkout yeah. is is becoming more and more of a thing. Um, I don't know. I'm super interested in computer vision and computer vision like processing. So it'd be really cool for me to have like analytics of you know, let's say you're a Costco warehouse operator and you want to see analytics of like where people are flowing and stuff. Like I think that would be really cool. Mm -hmm. uh, there's like so many like the co it's really to me it's like the cost of creating the Te useful technology is crashed yeah and um i think like if you just like have a job 
um, mostly your work is dealing with people. Even if you're a software engineer, you're like your job is mostly dealing with people and like managing yeah. like, human beings and and being part like an or, <laughs> like a node in a giant organization. So I think mm -hmm. like I mean I I don't know when I worked at Big Big Co, uh, I spent most of my time in meetings, right? Like coding was like oh great i get to take a break from all the <laughs> horrendous complexity of like like you know looking at diagrams and <laughs> yeah yeah oh without a doubt for sure <laughs> but kind of following on from that like would you recommend someone go start their own ai company in some way you know like do their own ding board if you will whatever that represents i don't know i don't know if you want to do that to be honest like for myself it's just kind of want to take a break from my day job and learned about the stuff to really just want to satisfy my own curiosity. I think that what you really want to do is to create your own tools and to learn how this stuff works to augment your, your, your daily life, to just really hmm. be cognizant of how you operate daily and to be open-minded about different ways you can use tools. And if you build something that is like that you can't live without anymore, then you should consider just like farming it out to other people. Yeah. I don't, I think it's like the way I, I think about it is like think of it imagine if Twitch streamers like I watch a lot of Minecraft YouTubers and Twitch streamers yeah. and imagine if they just like built video games for people that you know uh so there's a guy I watch his name is Tango Tech uh he's a he's a he's a Minecraft YouTuber and mm -hmm. he builds games in Minecraft and people watch his Twitch stream and people who watch his Twitch stream can also play the game he builds in Minecraft oh, that's sweet. so that's how I would probably want like encourage people to think about it because then you have something useful and once you have something useful that you can sell for people and it like starts paying for itself then, then there is no risk that you're taking on yeah. really um mm -hmm. like you go to your day job and you you know you just automate stuff out that's just kind of what a human being does at, at jobs these days anyway so yeah i love that like there's so much worry about oh it's gonna overthrow my whole lifestyle but it's like no change your perspective like let AI enhance what you're yeah. already doing. Like, let it just make it's, your life easier. Let it change your capabilities so you don't have to do the drudgery, coding or accounting work or law work, yeah. writing memos. Like, let it take that away so you can do what you want. Exactly. We're freeing up our attention by and, and allowing us the space to pay attention to important parts. We're not removing our agency from the world. We're removing low agency work from the world. Um, I like that. Like, it's like augment yourself, right? Like, just like come up with augmentations, create tools. It's what humans have always done, right? Like, you know, sharp stick, get fish, right? Just like automate stuff and augment yourself and be really like aware of it, right? Like, yeah, it's a hard part for a lot of things is just starting. And I think starting is like the hardest part. And it's getting easier and easier to start things, like you were saying earlier, Spencer, like yeah. uh, with GPT 4 helping you code. It's, it's pretty incredible what you can do. Yeah. So, what would you? say you know to someone who maybe listens to this hasn't delved into ai very much they're considering you know how can this alter what i okay. do what would you recommend for them so like try to understand how it works and i promise you it's not that hard it's just matrices all the way down it's like literally it's just data that goes through a pipe and then gets transformed it comes out the other way um try to you know being a good, I have to be really careful because I kind of like have the horrible habit of assuming that everyone's like a programmer, um, <laughs> but try to like really build a good black box abstraction of the tools if you can't understand it and don't be afraid of chipping away at the understanding every single day. And then just find a problem that you have. And then if you think that if you're taking a shower and you think that you can solve a problem with something, try, give it a shot <laughs> and it costs nothing, right? Like if you're just there on your computer, you're hanging out. That's fun to do i think um yeah. i think like the biggest the hardest part is just starting and if you realize that you can actually just do things then uh you're you're gonna be pretty surprised with the results you can you can t get out i think a lot of times it's like almost confusing to people it's like why hasn't anyone done this before and it's like because people suck dude that's, <laughs> that's, they just, they just, the they're story. just not good they just yeah. yeah exactly like people just suck dude just like you probably could <laughs> yeah <laughs> Exactly. Because the man, people are just working for the man and not thinking. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right. Um, you were saying that you have a little bit less than an hour now, right? 
Yeah, I should go okay, eat dinner. Uh, my wife cooked some tacos Oof. tonight. Oh, that sounds delicious. delicious. Tacos. Yeah. Yes, delicious. Yeah. Yes, very good. And I'm excited to go watch some Tango Tech after checking if my Dingbo server is still alive <laughs> because it's been ha- it's ha- it's, today's had a. After I invited about a thousand people, it started crashing all the time. Uh. Oh man, <laughs> it's messed up. <laughs> you know, it, it's a good problem to have. It's exactly yeah. The classic. Yeah. That's that's right. How about how about we do this? So we're gonna do suffering from success, and then we're gonna screenshot my face right here. <laughs> and I'm gonna I'm gonna share my screen really quick. We're gonna do that. Uh, let's share my entire screen, uh, and then this is. It's like how how am I how do I have like so many memes? It's just, you just got to do it right. It's the same thing with like programming. There you go. My face. Beautiful. There I'm looking great Beautiful. there. And then suffering Love from it. success, classic meme, DJ Khaled. It's a great, <laughs> it's a great album too. I, I, I actually can really relate to him to be honest. So we're gonna. I love DJ Khaled. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there we go. One of the funniest people. Oopsie Daisy. Online. Yeah, exactly. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Sometimes my segmentation doesn't work that great, and it's kind of suffering with this guy over here. It's good. Get, 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 kind of blends. Get, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Just his face here. Bada bing, bada boom. Clean. Rotate my face over. Yeah, exactly. Put my face in there. <laughs> Move this back. Suffering from success with Dingboard. And uh, get his nose out of here. Sorry to like make you guys pay attention to this for this long. There you go. Suffering no, from that's success. Dingboard. That's Dingboard. Yeah. Just a couple, Dingboard. Of, couple of couple of touch ups, and then we're done, right? Like a couple of touch ups here. And then oh, that's over incredible. Here, just like <laughs> suffering <we're done>. from <laughs> success. Yes, see. Oh, my God. <laughs> just it's so hard being so successful guys oh, man. i hope to have that problem someday crashing <laughs> thanks yeah, for joining thank us so, much. No, no so if people want to follow you follow you on twitter at what's your yep. handle you seen mtb y-a-c-i-n-e mtb at, on twitter dm me for invites to dingboard.com d-i-n-g-b-o-a-r-d.com dingboard's gonna save christmas we're gonna do it guys <laughs> save christmas. christmas cheer yeah perfect thanks you all right, see, see you later. Bye. We'll talk to you later.